I talked to three boats out here right now. Two of them have zeroed, and one of them caught two fish. Oh boy. I think I might have me a good one. Oh yeah. The new Grind t-shirt is out on my website right now. It's got my logo right here. It has Grind. What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Today I'm actually out on the beautiful Lake Lanier and today I want to kind of just go back to the basics, you know. You guys have been commenting a lot, Noah, you know, I want more tip videos. Noah, how do you locate fish? Noah, how do you do this? How do you do that? Well, today I'm actually going to go out on Lake Lanier and show you guys how I'm finding these fish. Show you guys what rods and reels I'm using. Show you guys what baits I'm using. Go in depth on why those fish are there, you know how I'm catching them. Of course, I'm going to go out here, I'm going to catch some fish, I'm going to have a little bit of fun, because this is my last week um, that I'm going to be around Lake Lanier before I go back to college, so I am going to want to, you know, have a little bit of fun as well, but I will be going in depth on some things. With the conditions today, very, very cloudy, you know, and that's really good because this fishing could be super tough today, which is good, for, good for the video. Um, because I want to show you guys that you could still catch fish in super, super tough conditions and how I adjust to catch those fish in these tough conditions. Um, the reason I'm saying it's tough, you know, bluebirds, guys, I hate it. You know, it's not always the best, but for these spotted bass, sometimes, you know, <laughs> to make a bite. Um, with it being super, super scattered on how it is, if it was just a little bit of cloudy, I wouldn't be too concerned. With how scattered it is right now, I might have those fish not tucked in as much as brush pot brush piles and might have them more suspended more scattered out around it that's my only concern but rather than that i think it should be really good if something crazy happens we can go fish for some largemouth we can adjust it and uh that's gonna make this video even better anyways because it'd be showing um how to do that but let's go ahead and get this video started yeah can you feel it I used to feel so devastated At times I thought we'd never make it But now we on our way to greatness And all that ever took is patience As you know this, this past week I was on Lanier that top water bite was on You know, I, I, I doubt it's on right now I haven't been looking I don't really read many things about Lanier. Um, I just go out there, see what the fish are doing, and I just go about it. Um, but I am going to start off this first spot on top water. You never know. You know, I, I don't know what these fish are doing. You got to experiment. Like, say this is a lake I never knew. Like, you just got to experiment with things. You know, some some stuff's not going to work. Some stuff will. And you just, just got to try it out and adjust to the situation. So I'm going to start off with this top water. I'm going to cover a little bit of water where I know... Um, there's some structure down there where fish would be on that structure. I'm going to try that right now with this top water. I'm going to cover a little bit of water and then I'll start breaking the water down and figure out what I have to do to catch this fish. Oh my God. Oh my God. They might eat top water guys. They might eat it. That was a really big fish right there. I, I don't know why he didn't get it, but he just didn't. Wow. I do have my boat in 45 foot of water throwing up at around 20 foot. I might push up a little bit shallower as those fish will go up to feed in the morning. Let's see if we can get one on this top water. So guys, that top water, I'm gonna count off the list for this spot. You know, you know a few blow ups, there's nothing that would really commit. Now I'm gonna chase the top water with this little duo spin, so another moving bait. You know, the top water, very aggressive. Now I'm gonna go to something a little bit more finesse. See if I can get a bite on this, which I should. And if I don't, that's when I'm gonna go in with the drop shot and kind of chase this bait up. But I should get a bite here. Oh my God. I took the rod out of me. These fish are acting weird this morning. I don't know what it is. I had all these bites and shit, not committing. Usually when those fish aren't committing like that, a quick change in the bait as in like color wise usually makes it happen uh, when I was throwing that top water I, I was very close to switching to like a bone color um, just because I was throwing chrome super cloudy outside I usually prefer bone or a white when it's cloudy um, when it's sunny I usually prefer chrome but you I, I mean I've came out here many a times where it's super cloudy I've 
pit stop, throwing a crow top water out there and they just eat it like inhale it. So it's one of those things you just gotta experiment with. But this duo spin, you know, it might maybe the color they don't like. I've never thrown this color out here. This is actually this is actually stuff I had tied on for my uh, national championship in Minnesota. Cause I actually just got back uh, two days ago. So I'm just I still got <laughs> I haven't really tied any linear pulls up. I'm still kinda using what I had from there. Last cast of this duo spin. I'm gonna try something a little bit different this cast. I'm gonna let it sink close to the bottom and slowly reel it in. I've been slowly reeling in towards the top of the water column, mid water column, so kinda cover all the areas and see what I can do. There's fish. Not a big one, but I'll take him. I guess the skunk off him back. That is the monkey off my bet. Dang, he literally just demolished my worm. All right, first guy, teeny tiny Twinkie. Twinkie, look at that Twinkie fish. But guess what? That's a start, all right? That's a start, and we're about to catch a few. That's a better one right there, guys. He's out here pretty deep. Still small. He ain't horrible. Honestly, that ain't a bad fish at all. I can't complain on that fish at all. Pretty guy. No complaints at all, guys. Just two fish. That was almost a, that was like the second drop after that. I'm gonna go down and catch another one. Pull him out of this brush pot, guys. Well, I got him out. That was awesome. That was absolutely awesome. I don't know if you guys saw that, but this fish right here, let me get a release. That fish right there, I dropped down. There, all right, there was a lot of bait at the top of the water column. There's a few fish chasing the bait. Under the bait, there's a few fish and a brush pile, all right? I dropped down, I feel it going through the brush pile. I randomly picked it up. And from that point, I had to literally pull him out of the brush pile. I thought he was going to get stuck, but I still felt his head just shaking like crazy. And I just kind of dug him out of there. That was awesome. Fish number three. I think we're going to move spots. I was literally about to build that up and move spots, but I saw that on the graph, so I had to drop down. We're going to move spots. We've been fishing here a little bit too long. We keep the ball rolling, hopefully hooking to some big ones. Guys, top water. There you go, guys. First fish on top water today. There's no cloud. There's all these clouds, so I switched to a bone color. He actually committed and grabbed it. There we go. Little guy. I think it's a little guy. They're schooling to my right. The boat, There's, they were schooling there. Right. Not a horrible fish, don't keep on catching. So guys, to let you know what just happened, I I never fish for largemouth on linear. I mean, absolutely zero zip, not like, I just don't. Well, I just tied a red crankbait on for some reason, just a little crawfish style uh, DT6. I don't know why, some I would usually throw in dirty water on the river, but something was telling me to hit this bank right here with rock and shade and you know, there's gonna be a largemouth here. I've caught largemouth around this area before and I was gonna try it. I'm not gonna lie, like my third cast, saw some in the water, brought that crankbait over it, and I just hooked about four pound largemouth, I just lost it. 
I, I cannot believe that just happened, but maybe we could, maybe I can try and catch some largemouth today and just keep this video kind of interesting because, I mean, that was just my first instinct and like I hooked a big one and he came off, but maybe we can duplicate this and maybe find some more stuff. Shoo! Feels good to catch this guy. Dude, come on, man. You're just ruining my drop. Stop, 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 stop. Look at that little twinkie. that guy is not bad at all I'll take this all day like all the same size this one definitely felt like a big one he was just pulling dra he was like he felt different than the other but i don't know i'm trying to catch me a good one on this draw shot four plus but it's hard to find them all right guys here's the fish out in the libel i had one more to take a cool picture with four of them and i accidentally just dropped them in the water but fish right here nothing crazy pretty little guy What's going on guys? I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, what I was catching this, how I was catching this fish, why I was catching this fish, you know, um, today was a tough day. You know, I thought we we're gonna come out here, throw a little bit of top water, maybe get them, but you know, my main focus was, was that drop shot because it's just so finesse and when the fishing's tough, that's what you need to throw. So I went to my first couple of spots, I threw a top water, got a few bites, I threw a little spy bait, got a few bites. Picked up the drop shot, started getting a lot of bites. The worm I was throwing was like a morning dawn color, a pink color worm. Any like clear water spotted bass, smallmouth, uh, lake, usually a pink morning dawn worm, like that's what I use, gets it done. Um, if I see those fish aren't really committing to that bait and they're not really eating it all the way, I will switch to like a green pumpkin. Um, and then after that, if they're not eating it all the way, I'll switch to like a shad, uh, like probably like a silverish or a bluish color. If they're not eating that, I would actually switch to like a shad uh, bait instead of a worm. You know, I just switch it up so much and figure out what those fish really key in on. Cause I know it sounds crazy, but those fish, they really do. I mean, it really matters that much what color you're throwing, what type of bait you're throwing. It really matters that much. It's literally results in from two bites to 15 bites. I talked to three boats out here right now. Two of them have zeroed and one of them caught two fish. And uh, I have a buddy out here right now. I don't know how many he's caught. I haven't talked to him. That, I mean, that's how rough it is. And I caught roughly 21 fish today. It's just, you got to figure out what they want. Not only what they want, it's just figuring out how you need to go about it with finesse. You know, there's people that are probably zero today. They're probably very stubborn. And they didn't want to pick up a drop shot or a shaky head or a worm and actually try to catch up a decent amount of fish in the boat. Yes, I didn't get like the best fish today. You know, I got a lot of smaller ones, like two pound range. But overall... Those people that zeroed, I kicked their butt. You know, it's just, just because it's so finesse and adjusting with the situations. I actually had a crazy thing today happen where I've been in Minnesota for three weeks now. You know, I've been largemouth fishing. Um, you know, I adjust to wherever I'm going. You know, largemouth spots, smallmouth. I actually went to Mille Lacs as well, caught some smallmouth. You know, just adjust to what type of fish we're fishing for. Largemouth or, you know, shallow water fish, um, majority of the time. I saw a bank, had some good looking rock, had some shade on it. You know, today's 97 degrees, I'm dying. 
It's honestly really hard for me to talk right now. I'm so hot and I'm just trying to get off the lake. But uh, I saw the bank and first thing that came to my mind is like, you know what, I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna tie on a little crankbait. I'm gonna throw it on that bank. For some reason, I, I was like thinking like a little crawfish crankbait. I don't know why, you know, that's just usually what I use in dirty water lakes. And I like picked it up, tied it on second cast. I had like a four pound largemouth on it and he came off and I was like, that is just unreal. And I went and fished some uh, shallow water stuff, some shallow water docks for a little bit. Didn't get any more bites, but I was just kind of fooling around and went back out deep, drop shot some more fish. So, you know, that works. But overall, I just want to show you guys, you know, some ways to break it down a lake, like to break down on how to catch fish. You know, how I pulled up on that first spot, chuck my top water, chuck my top water, chuck the top water, switch over to the duo spin, started throwing that, and then switch over to the drop shot, started dropping down, started casting that out, started hooking up with some fish. Kind of break down the spots that you're fishing by active baits, you know, throwing that active bait, moving down to a mediocre bait, and then moving down to something very slow to where you can break it down. So, you know, if I would've pulled up on that spot and fished that top water the whole time and moved to the next one, I wouldn't have caught those fish. And on days like this, I need to whip out that drop shot and catch them. Days where I'm catching four pounders on top water, I'm just trying to move really quick, that's reasonable. But today is very tough, how to whip out that bait, how to break down that water and figure out what this fish are wanting today. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy these type of videos, be sure to smash the thumbs up button. Be sure to tell your friends about the video. Be sure to subscribe, hit the subscribe button and uh, be sure to hit the little bell and also leave a comment below. I wanna see your feedback on this video. Also, the new Grind t-shirt is out on my website right now. It's got my logo right here, it has Grind um, just because you know, I believe everyone that's watching this video, uh, you know, me and myself, I believe everything in life, you know, you should put your full potential at, you just grind it out, you know, 100% effort with everything you're doing in your life. And that's why I made this shirt and this really motivates me. And uh, you know, when I wake up, I can just put this shirt on and look on it. I know that sounds crazy, but it's not, it motivates me. But thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like it, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Seven, an understatement to my day-to-day. -day. If ain't no way, then I'ma make a way. Yeah. Nigga said, said, ain't no way.